Hello my precious cinnamon rolls, my name is Fofo, I'm here back again playing Loren, the Amazon princess, I'm gonna camp. My sister was pressing his heart tree in by what to tell, and I walked in on him alone, silently wondering if Ray had finally learned to trust Mesfit as much as she did. And Will says, do you practice often? Mesfit stopped aiming and looked over at her. I used to. Let another arrow fly, he landed in a cosy spot next to several other arrows. Elena says, you have an amazing shot. And I'm sure I could do better. Essex smirked and lowered his bow. I would like to see you try. He handed his weapon to Eleanor and she felt a little nervous having to back up her claim. However, she held her chin up and planted her feet for a show of confidence. Aim for the tree. Eleanor raised the bow and loaded it carefully. She looked down the length of her, the arrow and to the target spot on the tree beyond. You should raise your arm like this, let the arrow rest on your hand, as it said. Mercer gently touched her bent arm, his other arm. Hand covered the covered the one gripping her bow. A light-headed feeling began to flood her as she felt the heat of its body against her. Ray says, what is going on? Eleanor retracted the bowstring and looked over to see Ray. Ray says, what are you doing to her? Eleanor says, he was only showing me how to improve my technique. Ray says, bow technique? From him? I am right here. I am a better source for help than from someone like him. Oh, oh. Mercer says, someone like me. Mercer growled. I says, oh, I'm sorry, did I offend all your half-demon friends? As it says, you meant how I am a dark elf. Ray didn't respond immediately. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Defend Ray, accuse Ray. Oh. oh, dear. I don't want to piss either of them off. But I kind of think Ray is out of hand here. So, I almost saw in Ray's face that Mesfit was right. All this time, Ray was still prejudiced against the dark elves for no reason. Oh, says, how could you say something like that? Ray says, don't, don't say that like it's true. Nurse says, she sees real eyes. Ray says, excuse me? Eleanor, why are you defending his drivel? Ray says, you're another dark elf, so why do you care? You're like me, you belong with me. Whoa! <laughs> it's possessive and creepy. Ray pulled Eleanor towards him. But she slapped him. He stared hard into Eleanor like he had just experienced the deepest betrayal he'd ever known. Eleanor's breathing sped up as Messer touched her shoulder in solidarity. Ray looked past Eleanor and asked at Mesfit with burning intensity. You poisoned her against me. She says, watch what you say. Both of you, Eleanor says. Ray says, it's not enough to steal our children and murder our elders. Ray pulled out his crossbow and named it at Mesfit. And says, Ray, no! The two men sprung at each other. Eleanor screwed for them to stop, but they didn't. They attacked each other brutally. Ray with his crossbow and daggers and Mesfit with his demon strength. Pretty sure you can't use a crossbow and daggers at the same time because a crossbow should usually takes up both hands unless it's a tiny, tiny one. So that's an interesting mental picture for me. The tree splintered from their powerful bows. Flesh wounds began to bleed across the grass. Mesfit lifted Ray off the ground by his neck. All Ray could do was claw at the dark elf's hands of freedom. Ellen says, Listen to me, let him go. The beast inside Mesfit started to settle, but his grip was as tight as ever. And I couldn't stand to see Mesfit being so awful. Tears formed in her eyes. I says, please. Mesfit lips trembled, but his glare strengthened. I said, didn't you? Says, didn't you hear him? Elna quickly grabbed at Mesfit's wrists and squeezed. She found his eyes and held them. Prisoner with her gaze, not literally with her fingers, because that's again weird mental imagery. I says, let him go. Let it all go. Dark Elf blinked and turned sad. This is a script on Ray, and he recaptured his breath. Ray says, you almost killed me. You almost killed me. Ray lunged to push Mesfit harshly, but Eleanor stood in front of him protectively. Ray says, Eleanor? This is where you stand? He almost... and you don't... Ray couldn't finish his thoughts looking into her face. The warmth of Mesfit behind her disappeared as the dark elf fled into the trees. Eleanor called after him, but he did not return. When she looked back to Ray, she saw how broken he had become. Ray says, why? Why him? Ella shook her head and backed up without answering. She wasn't understanding anything that had just happened. How could she explain it to Ray? Ella disappeared into the forest just as messed it them. Uh oh! Yeah, we kind of destroyed that romance. Both Ray and Mesfit kept their fight a secret, even though Ray could have easily persuaded Loren to execute Mesfit. Ella grew more, more relief for each Ray that he never did. Ella had lost a friend that day. Well, she truly wished she hadn't, but the things that were said that could not be taken back. There was no avoiding that. It was either. Either uh, Ray, Ray's end of Ray's romance, or my script was a romance there, and I kind of think Respite had the right of it. But okay. How are you feeling now that Krill is dead? I says, She looks so sad. Doris says, Soda, nothing. Revenge isn't that sweet. 
Boo. Oh, says, don't you feel good for having avenged your family? Dora says, maybe if I had actually killed him with that first stab, but then he picked me up and made a fool of me. Oh, says, don't think of it like that. Not the battles are clean victories. Most of them not. Look at Amonkiki. The duel did not end up cleaning for him either. He was also taken advantage of Jeff, but he's still a victor. That's all that matters. Take pride in your victory. I suppose it's just my family ain't coming back no matter what I do, you know. I don't know why I ran off. I thought I'd kill him all by myself, but I ain't no assassin. I don't know what to do while I until I got there. And, well, I was scared. So I hit again, like I always do. Oh, says, like an orc. They're icky. Oh, says, I believe that. So anyway, family's still dead. Didn't kill, kill crawl by myself, and I smell like orc. Uh, really joking. Did you want a piggy rat ride? Those always cheered up the lunglings at the Citadel. I'm a dwarf, I'm a kid. Right, right, sorry. Is that no? Uh, no. Oh, says, hop up. Woo! <laughs> so adorable. Oh, hi, she's got nothing more to say. Oh. Ah, uh, yes, that's his filler talk. Yep, yeah, filler. Amonkiki was still recovering from his drill of crawl. He was outmatched, but only through trickery. Gladiator did not act as if the battle was still bothering, but Eleanor could see that it was. You did a good job, Eleanor says. I did not win, Amonkiki says. You're alive. I'm glad. Amonkiki's eyes lowered for a moment, then back up. After a beat of silence, Eleanor shuffled her feet. Well, anyway. Eleanor turned and took a step away before a strong hand on her arm brought her back to her, brought him to a halt. She looked back and saw Amakiki staring intensely at her. His look was searching, but Eleanor did not know what answer to give. She felt her heart beat faster until it leapt up into her throat. Amakiki's grip on her arm loosened and he looked away. Finally, Amakiki turned and left Eleanor standing there, wondering what just happened. Eleanor felt her heart, felt her chest with her hand. What? He keeps ma- It's already maxed out. I mean, Amakiki says nothing. Amma says, that was one heck of a fight. Eleanor says, I guess Kroll and the Ox? Yes. Amma says, I know we were trying not to fight the whole army, but it sure felt like we did, didn't it? Amma says, I'm surprised how how difficult that encounter was as well. I'm more surprised by Dora. Amma says, yeah, surprise, I nearly exploded. Amma says, I bet you're happy she's left in town. Got so mad when that slime huffer picked her up, nearly exploded then too. I'm glad everything worked out in the end, Eleanor says. You got anything else to say? Miax is getting restless. Lauren... Yeah, yeah, filler talk. Karen? Orland says, You're close to the nomad. Eleanor tends to talk in a deep breath. Karen says, It is okay. You're young and your future's open. You're allowed to follow the whims of your heart. Eleanor says, It's not like that. Karen blinked. Eleanor says, I'm a idiot. I don't know what's going on inside of me. I've never had an opportunity to feel this way about anyone but now. Eleanor says, I'm learning what I truly want. Oh, no! I've been pushed into choosing! Oh, God damn it. I don't know. <laughs> What's someone else? Want Karen. I don't know which one to pick. I would decide the side of a strong leader. To so five, only found only one woman who would s- I would stand with until the end of time. They traded deep gazes. Karen says, "With those like that, I would find I would be easy for one to find. It would be easy for one to find that they they could not live without you." Ugh. <laughs> That's an awkward sense. You are unique in many ways, Eleanor. I would like to discover them all. But we didn't get. A Please, I need to be alone. Oh yeah, we got Karen, Namunkiki. Karen, Namunkiki are maxed out. Mesfit is at four hearts. Chamber is at three. Ray is broken, I think. I'm not a mood. Merth. We should really forget how to stand yet. Uh, Ray has gone back to his normal self. Oh, says, I see you're no longer tied to... Uh, I see you're no longer tied to a tree. It has taken too long. Oh, Eleanor says, but it happened, you're trusted now. Messer reflected on that for a moment. Yes, you promised me it would. Thank you. Messer looked almost as if he wanted to smile at Eleanor, but he held back for some reason. Eleanor decided to move on, but Messer stopped, stepped forward before she could leave. You're going to him again. Eleanor says, him? Eleanor looked at Messer, Messer's eyes were trying to read him. Stay. I'm going to stay with you longer if you like. Messer says, don't fault yourself in my company if you'd rather be somewhere else. Eleanor laughed and planted her feet in front of Messer. I'm not forcing anything. How about we spar for a while? Mercer blinked at her. Maybe by the forest. Eleanor smoked and followed him to their sparring circle. Uh, if it looked away. Oh, said, uh, okay, fine. I wanted to look at the qu- quests. Uh, this is what we... I want to save my game again. Save my game in a new slot. Um, these are the personal quests. So, let's start. We can only have Loren and Eleanor, so it's going to be tough. Lorraine simply nodded and they made their way to the Citadel. 
I might not be able to do this yet, but we'll see. Lan was greeted, uh, greeted as an unproven princess, but she was leave as something more. A crowd gathered in the Citadel Plaza. The trial of Queen started and ended with a public ceremony. Lauren says, how do we begin? Lauren says, I, Lauren says, I have yet to be told. The crowd parted and Karen walked up to her daughter. Karen? Lauren? Lauren says, I'm glad to see my own daughter where I once stood. May I, you own the pleasure some day as well. The trial of Queen takes a place below in the rec- reliquary. The door is here. Karen gestures to a stone door on, on the side of the castle. Lauren had never paid any attention to it before, but now she, she now realised why. You will go with your servant into those depths. Your trial will be complete when you find yourself out of them again. And says, what will I find there? Only queens shall now. Lauren took in a deep breath, knowing that that would be the most she would get out of her mother. Then I find out. Until then. Lauren moved towards the door, and Eleanor followed right behind her. The princess looked over and they shared a look. Let's have a quick look at my inventory. Blade. Well, not really got anything better. I still haven't got any boots on her. Oh dear, this might not be good. <laughs> That's because it decreases her speed. Uh, Lauren moved towards the door and Eleanor followed right behind her. The princess looked over and they shared a look. I think I read that already. The doors were open for them and they both walked slowly into the darkness. They descended deep into the ground. Ancient weapons and other historical Amazonian artifacts lined the walls around them. There were also the mummified remains of great Amazons. Lauren says, the great mothers. Eleanor says, I'm uncomfortable here. Yes, I... The sound of clattering bones surprised them and they whirled around to attack. A skeleton stood before them. Dead Amazon says, another queen has come. Lauren says, I cannot believe it. Lauren says, hold your weapon. Lauren bravely wet, walked up to the skeleton and watched her calmly. Are you one of the great right, mothers? Great mother says, your land is in famine. Lauren says, what? A child steals food. Do you punish the child? Lauren says, pardon? Do you punish the child? Do not punish the child. Or says, how could punishing a child for the crime of hunger serve my people? The skeleton immediately collapses into a pile of bones. Or says, what happened? Or says, I'm not sure. Or says, who was that? I I believe I know. There was a queen who sent her child to death in her reign. There were many deaths from starvation that year. Perhaps the spirit regrets her decision. Or says, then, the great ones are warning you not to repeat their mistakes. Lauren nodded and continued for the reliquary. I think if we'd got the answer, like, wrong, we'd have had to fight them. Another skeleton hobbled into their path, but they were not frightened this time. Elna says, what does this one have to say? Lauren approached it cautiously. The slaves revolted. They have killed many Amazons. Their fate is in your hands. Only had them. Spare them, because I don't agree with slavery in any shape or form. Elna says, I would find out, rather find out why they revolted. Our servants work best when their needs are met. Lauren looked over at Eleanor briefly. The skeleton pr- crumpled. Eleanor sighed in relief. Elna says, you answered correctly. No one says, truly? I'm answering from my heart, even though it conflicts with tradition. Is the trial broken? No one says, they went differently for you, maybe. And the man wants silent a moment and pressed on. After some time scouring the darkness, yet another skeletal Amazon crossed that path. And what do you wish to teach me? An Amazon is found in the arms of a man. They are lovers. What do you do? Kill the Amazon. Who do you kill? Kill the man. Kill the path. I don't want to kill any of them. I don't have an option for that. Kill the Amazon. And says, I would punish the... Lauren could not think of a faceless Amazon. She could only think of her mother or herself. Lauren swallowed and could not continue. And she was very angry. I will not kill either of them. Thank you, Lauren. How can you offer me no other option? The skeleton disappeared from Lauren's view just as she was working herself up. She had to blink a few times to realise she had passed the great mother's question. Lauren stood in silence for a long while. Lauren? She turned around at the start. I'm sorry, let's move on. They walked further until they reached the end of the reliquary. There was a stim- similar stone door, which meant they had found their exit. One says, we've made it, your highness. One says, I was expecting more. It's no matter, let's be done with this. She pressed away her disappointment and opened the door with Eleanor's help. Moonlight poured into the cavern. They stepped out into the night and saw that the population had gathered on the other side to welcome them. After instead of being greeted with celebration, all of the Amazons were quiet. Lorraine was wary as she stepped out in front of them. Queen Karen stepped out from the 
the crowd with a war spear ready. A circle formed around Karen and Loren. Eleanor was pulled back into the crowd. Loren says, I see, I'm to duel my own mother. Karen says, prove to your people they are worth their loyalty. Karen raved her spear and braced herself for battle. Loren breathed deeply and reached for her own weapon. It would not be easy crossing weapons with her own mother, but she also feared that she may lose. Karen was not just one Amazon, but their queen. Well, Karen's actually quite weak in combat, but I bet you she'll be um, buffed up for a boss fight. And even knowing that, she gave him, she gave her mother one of her mightiest war cries. Can only have uh, Loren at this point. Oh dear. Oh dear, I'm almost dead. I'm dead. <laughs> Oops. Ah! I don't know I can, if I can actually do this at this point. Yes! There we go. That's tough though. Karen tumbled and caught herself. She panted and rose onto one knee. It was then when the crowd was allowed to celebrate. Karen stood up and smiled at her daughter. Lorena found herself smiling as well. She looked around at the Amazons cheering for her. This is now yours. Lorena looked back at her mother. Karen slipped off the beautiful necklace that Lorena had not noticed before the duel. Karen placed the necklace around Lauren's head and rested it on her shoulders. You have earned the love of your people. May your reign be long. Karen bowed her head slightly, but Loren bowed even more out of gratitude. Karen laughed. You needn't bow to anyone now. You're still queen and you have given me a great gift, Loren says. Loren says, but it is you that will not do. They smiled warmly at each other. Eleanor was finally allowed to join Loren's side. She beamed at her. Loren says, congratulations. Loren says, Eleanor. Loren smiled at, her, smiled at her back and it perplexed those around her, even herself some. She realised that then that she was happy she had not only Eleanor with her own, in the reliquary, but that she had known her at all. If she had not known Eleanor, Loren's answers would have been much different. Her lessons would not have been learned. Loren says, I am grateful. Eleanor didn't understand the depth of her gratitude until much later. Necklace of Queens! So, yeah, we got we got that done. Um, let's put that necklace on. Well, it's called the Necklace of Leadership here, but it's only, it's only usable by the Ren, so... Save my game again. And let's um, do one more personal quest. Uh, we don't have race. Is it because we uh, broke his heart? Let's do Draco's, because I remember that's hilarious. We can only have Draco and Eleanor in the party. Eleanor found Draco in camp to remind him that, that she was going to leave for Horus soon. Instead, she found Draco's twin sister. Draco says, How do I look? Am I a pretty piece of work or what? No, it was only Draco with two apples on his top and a flower in his hair. Eleanor says, Um, what are you doing? Draco says, This is my disguise. An apple slipped down and out of his robe, leaving him with only one. Eleanor says, No. Draco says, What else can I do? You already said no to the mustache. Eleanor says, I've said no to you coming with me, period. Draco says, But I want to. Eleanor says, You asked me to do this because you couldn't. What's the point of you come to? Anna says, you do need me to go, don't you? Yes, that's why I'm going with the disguise. Anna put the flower out of Draco's hair and the mage pouted harder. Anna says, I'm leaving now. Anna turned and left the silky mage at the camp. She crossed the plains to reach horrors and the imperial city of magic. The magic academy was the centerpiece of the city and the seat of power for its leaders. As Eleanor walked through the streets, she saw how much the city had come to depend on magic. Everyday objects were animated, signs were glittering, and potion shops were in every corner. Elnor pushed through the city and into the grand halls of the Magic Academy. Wizards of all ages were walking with haste to their destinations. After a moment of awe, Eleanor approached an ebony desk to get oriented. Excuse me, I'm here on behalf of the mage that used to attend here. I need to collect his belongings. As I said their name, Draco Firestad. Wizards stopped what they were doing and stared at Eleanor like she was from another world. Wizards said, and you are? Eleanor said, his cousin. The receptionist looked at Eleanor, looked at Eleanor up and down. You're an... Eleanor could tell she was hung up on being, her being an elf. Eleanor says, that won't be a problem, will it? Wizard says, just a second, please. Eleanor was abandoned at the desk as the wizard rushed off down the hall to get someone. Excuse me, would you say the fire starter? Eleanor t- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Eleanor turned around and almost had a heart attack. Eleanor says, Draco? Pish brush, I'm his uncle. Eleanor says, they don't come in the dark. Da- this guy's is awful. You'll be spotted. Like it says, long beard's the style now. You're going to look weird without one, actually. It says, what is that? Is that animal hair? 
Yeah, it's so scratchy. Is it Mom? I don't know what's out again. She turned around to see a grumpy dwarf wizard looking disapprovingly at her. I must have howled, head professor. You said you were Derry's cousin. Derry? Mrs. Sell says, who is that? His uncle. I mean, my father. My father. <laughs> Draco averted his eyes and looked around the room with Master Howell expected him. We were all I had family. Or at least family that was willing to admit it. Well, I says, well, here we are. I see you follow me. How gal did them f- Bleh. Bleh. I'm throaty today. <coughs> How guided them through the halls. Open doors revealed young magicians practicing alchemy and chanting spells. I don't know what you'd want with a mage's possession. It only has an academy issued robes and some toys. Illegal toys, mind you. We do not permit that kind of frivolity. Oh, well, says not even for kids. Draco says, but uh, I heard he also had a pendant with him. No, I would have known of it. Unauthorized jewelry is also forbidden. That's how abruptly turned into a storage room. That's a good magic trick. You'll find a box with his name somewhere here. Oh, well, says thank you. But how was out of the room and the door slammed shut before she could finish? Helena was taken aback by how callous the professor had been. What's the matter with him? Yeah, Draco says, typical him. I hated him so much, which was okay because he hated me too. Anna looks over the name of the boxes and stops with a familiar name. Chambara? Was that the s- was this the sa- same dark witch shapeshifter? All oh, right, here I am. Draco opened his box and flipped through his things. As Hal said, only are open and some toys were inside. Anna says, anything? It's not here. Do you think it was stolen? He says, yeah, maybe, maybe what by what face must I have? Anna says, I mean by a student. Do you really think he would take it? Draco went to open the door, but he couldn't. Uh oh, it's not opening. Oh, it says, What's wrong? We're stuck. No, it's locked. See, I told you who is it. Draco ripped his fake beard off. He knew it was me and locked me in here. Oh, it says, That's ridiculous. Why would he want to lock you in a room, even if he knew it was you? I told you, he hated me. Oh, it says, What did you do to him? Draco says, Why did you have to ask that? Like I deserved it. He hated me because I was me, that's all. Sudden explosion brought the entire academy. Eleanor and Draco froze. They could hear mass panic on either side of the door. Oh, it says, What was that? What's wrong? I don't know, but I know we have to get out of here. Draco shot a burst of flame at the door and turned it into ash. They could now see young children fling down the hall. They stepped out and saw where they were running from. Demons! Great. Air demon, demon beast. Okay, Eleanor, shoot it. Draco. Magic's not great against this right now. Oh man, Eleanor needs to heal up. 82. 82 is the best I can do though. Oh no! It'll be alright. There we go. Sorry about Eleanor dying there, Eleanor. Ooh. Says, what are demons doing here? Draco says, so this accident didn't stop happening after I left. I figured. Oh, says, you said we call this an accident? Scream for help kept them from conversing. They rushed a- to the age of some age children. First things first, Eleanor. Heal up. Better than 80 damage. Oh. Yeah. I says, Thank you. Thank Draco. Draco says, Hello. The teacher gathered the children silently and ushered them away with sideways look. No one seems happy that you're here. Draco says, I don't care. I'm happy I got to leave. More screams. I says, Where are the demons coming from? We need to tell them. A team of black robe ro- a team of black robed wizards gosh that's hard to say rushed through the hall with great purpose. Eleanor says, Who are they? Because they said the people that cold when, get cold when stuff like this happens. And happens a lot. Ellen says, Really? Magic can be really dangerous if done wrong, but they had this doing tentative magic when we were still reading our beds. Master Wartface said those accidents were motivations to study how to do stuff perfectly all the time. It's not enough that the kid who messed up might get killed, but they had to expel him too. Oh, so is that what happens to you? You made a mistake like this? It doesn't matter because they were looking for a reason to kick me out anyway. They only kept me that long because... Well, seeing this type of chaos and Derry in the same place is not unfamiliar to me in the least, Master Hell says. It's Draco, Draco says. Oh, Master Hell says, what's your tongue when you speak to your elders? Yes, sir. Uh, wait, I don't go here anymore. I don't have to listen to you. My pendant was in the box, by the way. Did you take it? Master Hell contorted his face in anger. How dare you accuse me of something so petty. 
Master, Wizard says. A group of teenage midges were fighting off the demons on losing. Look at these cute little extra legs. They're kind of adorable. It's totally pointless because you can't walk with them. But look at the cute. A teeny a group of demons losing. Yeah, the horrible beast led the demons with frightening cunning. Use the power of telekinesis to separate the wizards from the staff. The majors were less defensive without their training staves. That says I have him. The wizard dwarf charged forward and unle unleashed a mighty slew of cells, but the telekinetic demon was still standing. Master's howls, staff was also flung away. The children were implanted in fear. The professors formed a human shield around them. Draco says, "Come and get me." Draco ran forward and distracted the demons. He took the bait, so Eleanor haphazardly did the same, even though she was unsure if they could handle so many demons by themselves. The telekinetic demon was confused with Draco for a moment, which allowed them their first advantage. Right. Oh, I can't do better than 67. I hope this is slightly I haven't got any uh, items I can use on him. I'll just heal myself. I hope this is slightly uncomfortable. Oh, and uh, Draco needs to add a potion. Oh, oh, Lorenz dead. Uh oh, Eleanor's dead. I will never. This is why these missions are tough because you have to go with only two characters. Almost got him. There we go. Do you like me or do you like me? The battle was fierce, but all demons were slain. The students started whispering to each other about Draco and how amazing he was. The professor says he saved us. Master Hal huffed and rolled his eyes, but Draco allowed himself a moment to fully appreciate Fonts. Draco says, You're welcome, you're welcome. Charles says, He made fire from his hand. How did he do that? Master Hal says, This man is one of the few best with superior magical talent. He does not need his staff or scepter to ban magic to his will. Children's jaws dropped in unison. Oh, says, I have no idea, is that true? Jacob says, if they say so, I've always been this way. Master says, it looks like we should be showing our gratitude. Should be showing you our gratitude instead of our scorn. Jacob says, looks like. Don't get cocky, young man. Uh, that was all the, wa the Master was said before leaving to take care of the mess that had been made. Master says, perhaps we should leave? Jacob says, without my lucky charm? Oh, says, perhaps this now, now is not the best time. He says, alright. Jacob drives his feet as they made the way to the exit. Just before they reached it, something shiny dropped from the ceiling. They stared at it for a moment, then Draco rushed to put up. No way! Lana says, don't tell me that's... Draco put it around his neck with a wide grin. It is, I don't believe it. But how? Draco says, look! Lana says, no really. They both looked up and saw nothing but a hanging banner. Draco says, oh! That's right. Lana says, what? It got thrown up there by some friends. <laughs> look, he's blushing. Friends, sir. And I forgot to go get it. So Master Hal didn't steal it. Draco flushed and looked away. Lana says, Lana says, I think you owe some an apology. Says, I'm ready to go now. Lucky charm! And I'm going to end this episode here. Hi, this is Fo. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment, and if you really liked it, please subscribe.